but it is great to be here tonight. It is excellent to just be able to take a breath, step away from what is going on on the media, on social media, on the TV, on the news, in the newspapers, whatever it is. It is nice to... Corona, as my son says. He, he's mentioned a few times that he's tired of Corona. And I don't blame him. There's, are, there are some things that we're not able to do and haven't been able to do for a while that it's driving him stir crazy. Okay, you can go back to your seat. Go back to mom, because I might step on you. But with all the, all the things that are going on, we are being bombarded each and every day from different views on COVID to riots in the streets, brutality. And since this is an election year, politics. I, those four things, I am tired of them. Not tired of listening to what people, because I do respect people and their views on those things, but just tired of, of every single day just bringing me down. Bringing me down. In church, we are in a culture. We're starting to become a part of a church culture that is struggling with its purpose and identity and mission because everything that's going around today in today's society. We look to the next post or the next news channel for the truth. We see news as truth and hold on to it as truth. As a church, again, we are losing our purpose and our mission and what our purpose and mission is. We are forgetting how to function as followers of Jesus Christ. We have forgotten what Jesus said. Our commander, our commander Jesus, has given us as a church. Love God, love others. In 2 Timothy, Paul instructs Timothy with this. No soldier is in active service, entangles himself in the affairs of everyday life, so that he may please the one who enlisted him as a soldier. I want to make one thing clear about this passage. See, Paul is not telling Timothy to remove himself from everything that's going on in the world, from civilian affairs. He is not telling Timothy to completely remove yourself, to seclude yourself, and be, a, be separate from the world. That's what happened in the Dark Ages. Monks started coming around, and they started secluding themselves because they said, okay, we are not supposed to be a part of the world. We're supposed to be a part of the world, but not partake in what the world partakes in. And so this passage he is giving to Timothy he is telling Timothy to endure hardship to the point where Timothy is in complete obedience to his commanding officer, Jesus. Complete obedience. If you're following notes, this is the part where you fill in the blanks. Complete obedience. It is not about removing yourself from the world, but knowing we report to a higher commander, Jesus. I'm going to repeat that. Complete obedience. It is not about removing yourself from the world, but knowing we report to a higher commander. A soldier understands this. He is given a command from his superiors, some from his superior officers, and he must obey it. If he doesn't, it is considered subordination. He loses trust. He would fall out of good merit, not just with his commanding officers, but with his fellow soldiers. Our instructions, church, does not come from the world. Our instructions do not come from social media. Our instructions do not come from the news feed. 
Our instructions come from the word. Complete obedience to please a commander starts with a life that is given over to complete surrender. There are a few things that we can do in order to untangle ourselves from civilian affairs, to make sense of what is going on around us, and to be dedicated to our commander, Jesus. The first one, first one, unplug. Simple, unplug. How often do we look at our phones? We're sitting down. Some of you guys are looking at your phones. I hope you're taking notes. That's okay. But how often do we just sit down and we look at our phones? Facebook, what's going on on Facebook? Okay, COVID, politics, COVID, politics. Oh, look at a riot. COVID, politics, riot. Okay, you put it down. Five seconds later, you're like, okay, has somebody posted on that post that I just posted that wasn't about COVID, politics, whatever? Nothing. No changes. Put it down. Five seconds later, pick it up again. You guys get, the, get where I'm going? Or how often do you turn to a news channel? Okay, what's on next? Or what's on a different channel? Another news channel. Okay, what's on? You keep on flipping through different news channels. And different news channels turn to TV shows that talk about what? Okay. Our movies turn on movies that talk about the things that we're trying to escape from, trying to unplug from. See, in this thing, when we do this, it's wasted time. By simply unplugging and converting that wasted time, we can be meditating on his commands on scripture. We put ourselves in a great place of a soldier that is obedient to a commander when we simply unplug and remove ourselves and spend time with God's command, scripture. Take time for adjustment. Take time to breathe. How often do we go to work? Some of you guys are experiencing working from home. How often do we allow from waking up in the mornings to go to work and then come home and then have dinner, watch TV, and go to bed. Do we allow ourselves time to simply adjust, to pause, to breathe from going to work? Do you, are you in your driveway? Do you, are you not looking at your phone? Set your phone down. Just breathe. Read some scripture. Meditate on his word. When you're going to bed, do you, is the last thing that you, turn, that you look at is your phone or the TV, and then you shut the lights off. Then your mind's thinking about all those things that you just saw. Are you setting your phone down? A good thing to unplug is set your phone down an hour before bed. Place your phone in a different room. But hey, I, I have my alarm clock set on my phone. Get an actual alarm clock. It's simple. There, problem solved. Get an alarm clock. Don't use your phone as an alarm clock if you have problems with that. Are you shutting off the TV an hour before bed? Simple things to just unplug, to unwind, to time to take an adjustment. Many of our phones have, have something that has, it's called screen time. If you have an iPhone, it's called screen time. If you have an Android, I think it's called screen time as well. I, I'm not sure. But it's a, something, a, something in your phones that tracks how long you are on social media, how long you are playing games, how long you watch movies, how long you do, do certain things on your phone. And it tracks that. There are even apps out there that you can download and actually track your time. Okay, I'm going to push this button to see how long it takes me to eat a meal or to cook a meal. Okay, I'm watching TV. Let me turn on this app and I'll track the time that I watch TV. If you struggle with unplugging, look for these apps. Look for, there's many apps out there that do this and log your time, create, create, 
a time budget. Create a time budget. See where you're wasting your time at and say, okay, I can cut this off. I can cut this off. And there's also another app, an app that I just recently found. It's called the Pause app. It's from one of my favorite authors, John Eldridge. He wrote Wild at Heart. And it allows you to pause and unplug from everything that is going on around in the world. From everything that entangles us. So that we can just pause, throw it off, and run the race. And to be a soldier in complete obedience to our commander. Second thing, so we got unplug. Second thing is soul care. These soul care is stuff, is focusing on things that elevates the soul, that awakens the soul. What things do you do to awaken your soul? Read. I like to read for pleasure, not just nonfiction stuff, not just my theology books, but actual fiction books. I'm going through a couple Star Wars books. I'm loving them. I'm, it's, it's, it's candy to my mind. Do you like to paint pictures? Do you like to take pictures? Do you like to cook? Do you find enjoyment in cooking a meal? Are baking. I love baking. I'm a baker. My wife loves my baking. She thinks I'm an excellent baker, better than she is. Think of things that elevates your soul, that you get really excited for. See, in the story of the prodigal son, the son demanded what others had, but he did not. He demanded, he wanted what his younger brother wanted, but he did not. See, social media is like the modern-day version of the older brother. His mindset was this. Social media's mindset is this. It's constantly there. It's saying, why should you have what I don't have? Why should you have what I deserve? Or why should your voice be heard when mine is not? See, we try to unplug from social media. We try to step back, but we find it difficult. Did you know that social media has a direct link to depression, to envy, and anxiety, a direct relationship with those things, the more that you're on social media and less unplugging, the more that those levels, uh, your anxiety, your depression, your envy skyrocket. And it's constantly trying to pull us out of, out of that peacefulness, out of, out of God's command, out of his word. Church, our souls are daily bombarded. And what I'm saying is not to, not, not to take part in those things. I'm not saying not to delete your Facebook account, not to turn off every single news station, not to stop getting the subscription to the newspaper or whatever. I'm not saying not to do those things, but I'm saying allow your soul allow your soul to be cared for, to pause, to pause from the bombardments of the world. See, how can you be able to love others as yourself if you're not taking care of yourself? How can we take out the little speck in our brother's eye when we have a log in our own? We can't. We can't take care of others when we can't take care of ourselves. Give those things up to God, our commander. Use the pause pause app for a place to start. See, it starts out with just a minute. 
You don't think a minute is a, you think a minute might be a lot? You say, I might not have time to do that. I might, I don't have enough time to do that. But see, a minute, I'll tell you this, if you do this for a minute, just, just pause, rest. A minute will turn to two minutes. We'll turn to four minutes. We'll turn to eight minutes. And by the time 10 minutes comes, you're pausing for 10 minutes and you're like, I want more. I want more. That is what being thirsty for God is about, wanting more of his presence. I tell you, when I was in youth camp, when I was in youth, in youth camp, went to youth camps, all the youth pastors, all the leaders said, you know what, if you have a hard time studying your Bible, reading your Bible, take five minutes, five minutes to read scripture. And those five minutes become 10, become 15. And I found it really difficult just to focus five minutes. I'm like, that was five minutes. I barely got started. I want more. The last thing. So we got unplug. We got soul care. And we got believe. Are to abide. Jesus declares to his disciples that he, was, he is a vine and you are the branches. Abide in me and I will abide in you. This is faith. This is the most crucial step in learning how to step away from the civilian affairs from the bombardment of everyday life and to complete obedience, complete obedience of being a good soldier is faith. To put it simply, faith is action. Faith is acting upon the commands the commander gives us. Too often we forget that there is a God there. We are often bombardment. Our anxiety levels go up. Our depression goes up. We're in a storm of of life and we're like, God, you're not here. God, where are you? We're so focused on the storms in our life that we forget to focus on Jesus and walk on water. In wartime, soldiers are given a command. If they do not listen, they will fail. Soldiers have to act on their belief that their commander's word will get them through the battle. If they do not, they fail. We often feel that someday God isn't there. God is distant. When we feel anxiety on the rise and depression starts to sit in, where is your faith? Do you believe that God is present even though he may not seem to be present? Faith is this. It's declaring, God, even though you seem far away, I believe you are here. That is the mind change. That is total mind change from looking at the storms of our lives and focusing on the eye of our commander. It is completely saying, God, you know what? I don't feel you, but it's believing that Despite how I feel, I know God is here. It is a mindset. It is a vocal declaration. When I just said that, when I said, God, I don't feel your presence, but I know you are here. My viewpoint just now changed. But it's being careful not to go back to to believing that God isn't there. Our belief has to take action, and it takes work. It takes time. See, God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. When I leave, I will send a comforter, comforter, the Holy Spirit. He says, abide in me, and I will be in you. Church, we are in an opportune time to remember what Paul wrote to Timothy and not to be entangled in civilian affairs, but to live a life that is in complete obedience 
to our commander. It is the realignment of the church. See, our pastor has a great vision. Our pastor has a great vision. And at this time, if the worship team can come up. Our pastor has a great vision for this church. It's going outside of the four walls. The four walls of social media, of television, four walls of the world, social media, TV, selfishness, and then unknowing. His vision is to take us out of those four walls that entangle us and takes us back into community of being a church. That is what surprise vision is, is to be a part of community. So often we may say, you know what, I don't have time. I don't have time to, to be a part of a community. My day is so filled up. Church, we don't, we do not. We cannot afford to not take time to be a part of a community. We cannot afford not to take time to be a part of a community. Would you rather be so focused on social media to being dragged down constantly, daily, finding no revival in your soul, feeling depressed, feeling your anxiety levels going up day after day? Would you rather be living in that? Or would you rather be a part of something bigger, be a part of something better? a better way, a better life. Being a part of community. See, the church, when it first started, it didn't meet in the walls of a building. It didn't meet in the synagogue. It met where? In people's homes. If you're having a meal, if you're cooking dinner, invite people over. Talk about scripture. Talk about the commands that our commander has given us. That is what surprise vision, that is what our mission is, is to celebrate the prodigals that are coming home. And how do we do this? Our world is constantly changing. It isn't a change now. We are going to be seeing things different. We are going to be doing different things differently as a church than have not been seen or done since the church started. This fall, I'm excited. I'm the youth pastor here and I'm excited for the vision of the youth. We are going to be going outside of the regular Wednesday night services and doing something different, changing it up, meeting in homes of the youth, building relationships up, doing confirmation differently than what it has been in the past, where the youth are a part and constantly being a part of the church, being mentored by the worship leaders, being mentored by the media team, being mentored by the ushers, by the pastors, and celebrating that, celebrating that when when they're done. Yes, there's going to be times for okay, times for studying, times for getting deep down into the scripture and the word and being able to give your testimony. Youth, it is important to know where you're at. Youth, it is important to know your testimony, who you are in Jesus. It's important to know, to learn how to communicate that. And at the end of confirmation, It's going to be a celebration. We're going to focus on individuals of being a part of the body of Christ. And we're going to celebrate that. I'm excited for this. It's going to take dedication. It's going to take time, going to take effort. Even being a part of this church, it's going to take time. It's going to take dedication. It's going to take effort. I can tell you this, I'd rather be a part of this church, 
I'd rather come early on Sunday mornings to help set up or to stay later to tear down than to sit watching TV. I'd rather be a part of the teardown team than wondering what's going on in the next football game. I'm excited for this time, church. I'm excited for where we're going and where we're at already. It's going, things are going to look different. They are, already are. If we don't learn how to adapt, we'll never get far. We'll never become soldiers that are loved by a commander. Let us pray. Father, thank you for this evening. Thank you for this time to gather here. As we focus on you and your word, what you have commanded us, let us realign our lives so that we can simply learn how to unplug, to take care of our souls, and to have faith saying, even though that there are storms in my life, even though that I see the waves and the wind around me, even though that I see the battle raging on, I declare, God, you are here. You are here. Thank you for the vision that you've given Pastor Matt and for the leadership team. Be with us, guide us as we go out here tonight. In your name, amen. You know just what to do, yeah.